hopefully this helps other people who might want to who are considering like coming to new zealand okay it's worth Excellent. it it's so pretty here highly recommend Welcome back to my next video. In today's uh, video, we have a real treat. My One of my oldest and best friends in the Nomad Life is going to present today, my friend Brian. And uh, I think you're going to really enjoy the video. Now, I know from uh, past videos that a lot of you are out there wondering, oh, what's going on, Bob? Are, are you quitting? Are you sick? Are you dying? And my answer is to that is no such luck on your part. I am like a toe fungus. You cannot get rid of me that easily. I am here for the long haul. Until I draw my last breath, and with a little luck, I'll have, a, I'll have my cell phone out watching my last breath, taking a video, hoping I can finally go viral. Everyone will see Bob dying. There'll either be celebration in the streets or howling in the streets. We'll see what it, how it turns out. But at any rate, I am not going anywhere. However, uh, I'm older. I'm tireder, uh, not the best English, but very accurate, and I would like to do less. And so my goal is to do less and less on the channel. And so I have been thinking about how to do that for years, actually, now. Another question you're probably going to have is why Brian? Uh, well, literally, Brian is one of my oldest and best friends in the nomadic life. I've known Brian for 11 years now. It's still early on, and I think, I think it's going so well that in the long run, Brian will be taking over as co-partner with me in the channel, and you'll see more and more of him. Again, I'm never leaving. He's going to be a part, but I will be a part too. But I know Brian's heart, and Brian's heart is uh, to love and care about people. That will always be the primary thrust of this channel. How can I help the nomad community? How can I help the individual who's suffering and needs hope? This channel is about offering hope. So I think the channel will change, it will be different, but its heart of caring and compassion will always be there. And let me tell you why I'm convinced that's true. When we started Homes on Wheels Alliance three years ago, uh, we needed board members. So when I thought about who would be on the board of trustees, Brian was the very first person I thought of. And he is now still on the board. He is the treasurer of the board. He contributes his whole life and heart and soul to helping others through Hawa. The heart and soul of Chief RV Living will not change. Brian's heart is to care and help people, to give hope, to give a way forward. That will never change on Chief RV Living. In fact, I believe it will be enhanced by Brian being a part. I hope you will welcome him in and see that this is a step forward and not in any way, shape, or form a step backwards or even a step sideways. This is an improvement. We'll find out together. So Hello everyone, welcome back to Cheap RV Living. Today we have a special treat for you today. We are going to talk to someone from the future. This is Vanessa, <laughs> she is from the future. And by that, she's from New Zealand or she's living in New Zealand. So Vanessa, go ahead, say hi. Hello, hi everybody. Vanessa, I am in the future. <laughs> you are in the future. Are there robots in the future? What is it like? Tell me all about there's it. No, there's no robots. There's Roombas, but you know, that's probably in the States as well. So it's fine. Those are the ones that are going to take over the world, I'm pretty sure. So I'm probably. just saying. Yeah. Um, are They've there got so much dirt on us. They, oh, <laughs> okay, my God. That was awful. But great. And that's my one dead joke that's done. Yep. We're going to keep that one. Uh, yes. <laughs> that was great. All right, so all kidding aside, uh, I've known Vanessa since uh, 2016. I met her at the RTR, uh, and uh, at that point, she was in a Dodge van. Uh, and what we're going to talk to her about today, though, is that she has gone to New Zealand, and she's traveled a bit in New Zealand. Uh, and so we're going to ask you a bunch of questions. Are you cool with that, Vanessa? Sounds great. All right, Sweet perfect. Ed. Sweet as. We're going to learn all, all about the sayings, too. So. <laughs> Um, so I remember when I first met you, like you were already talking about New Zealand as this thing you wanted to do at a certain point in your life in the future. You're like, that's, that's really what I want to do. What made you decide that? Like what put that on your radar for you? Oh, so 
there's the short story and there's the long story. No, um, yeah, basically, like I got myself into heaps of student loan debt. <laughs> Okay. Um, and um, the other side of that was that I had also like I'm just really into hiking and um, and backpacking and I like New Zealand just seemed to be like like nature on steroids. So it just seemed like a great place to go. Um, I've been talking about it for ages because when I graduated from um, from I want to say uni, <laughs> but college, you guys called it college. Um, yeah, when I graduated from college with my degree, um, I had so much student loan debt that it was just like, it was, yeah, it was real bad. Um, so my goal was to get myself out of, of debt. And so I mm -hmm. kind of used New Zealand as like my, my goal forward. So like, okay, oh. as soon as I can get myself out of debt, I'll go to New Zealand. And so how long have you been in New Zealand at this point? Uh, it's been three years now. Is oh my crazy gosh. to me thinking about that <laughs> yeah oh my gosh excellent and so when you first went to new zealand you know I'll, I'll preface it by saying that when you were in the states you also lived in a van so tell us just a little bit about uh, what van were you in in the states and how long you were in it before you went to new zealand cool yeah that was uh good old chester the dodge van <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh used to be a news van and traveled in that built it out and everything um over four years okay so i traveled in that for four years nice and then when you van, i'm sure yeah that thing was awesome <laughs> uh and so then when you went to new zealand um tell us a little bit about that as far as you got there and then you you were going to buy a van when you were there right yeah so okay. um and that's that's what i did is i bought a van here um, I didn't, I kind of like, I had only planned on being here for a year. So I just looked for one that was already like pre-built, I guess. Yeah. Um, gotcha. um, and so, yeah, so this one was like much, much smaller, much tinier, okay. but okay. It, it, it was only for, supposed to be for a year. <laughs> gotcha. And, uh, so what did you look for in a van when you go to New Zealand? So if someone is wanting to go to New Zealand, what, what recommendation would you have for them looking for a van? Um, I'd say, let's see, a couple things. Sorry, Brian, I didn't prepare as much as I had planned to for these That's questions. Okay. You're totally fine. <laughs> um, probably one of the biggest things is just kind of, um, the, one of the most expensive things is like a cam belt replacement. So it'd be really good to know like when the cam belt was replaced last, um, on a van. A lot of, so van life here is actually quite, um, common or like a touristy thing to do, I guess here. Um, so there's, there's, um, yeah, it's just, it's quite a common sort of thing. So you see a lot of vans that like people will buy for, you know, like the year that they're here or however long that they're going to be here and then they sell them again. So there's like a lot of vans that are kind of on the market. Um, basically like you'll see, you'll find a lot that have like a lot of K's on them or a lot of miles, but here it's okay. kilometers. Okay. Um, so you'll find like lots of vans that have a lot of kilometers on them. Um, so it's just making sure like kind of the basics you can even go to like um, if you're unsure like not really good mechanically like knowing what to look for you could mm -hmm. always take it to um, here there it's sort of like the DMV but it's called uh, VT <laughs> you're gonna laugh at me it's called VT and Z okay. <laughs> because we say Z instead of Z <laughs> okay gotcha another quirky thing about New Zealand <laughs> So um, if you take it to VT and Z, they can do like a whole check on the vehicle um, and make sure okay. that like, yeah, like kind of like what's good, what's bad on it, what might need to get replaced soon, those kinds of things. Yeah. Now, does it need any kind of certification or anything to, to, you know, be a road van for you, for instance? Yeah. So there's two different things. There's the, there's what we call a warrant of fitness, which is like, for any vehicle, not just vans, um, a warrant of fitness is just like a periodic check. And depending on how old the vehicle is, um, you might have to get them more often or not, but it's required for all vehicles in New Zealand. Um, okay. And it's just them kind of going over things like checking the tires, making sure your lights work, all of these different things. Um, and you could go to any mechanic or, or the VTNZ um, to get those checked out. Okay um yeah. and then but for camper vans um you don't have to have this but it certainly makes it a lot easier is like a camper van certification and so mm, okay. it 
yeah, there's like s- certain regulations around like what what constitutes like a camper van, um, including having like a portable toilet, um, being able to use the toilet in the van with the bed down fully. Um, you also have to have like so many liters of um, water. You have to have like a fresh water and a gray water tank. And they have okay. to be so big depending on how many people like the van is fit for, I guess. Okay. Um, now, how long, so you're in the van, you bought the van and, and how, like, how did you find it? Was there like a Craigslist over in New Zealand? Yeah. So there's a website called Trade Me that um, has a good amount of listings. Like they have um, vehicles and stuff from all over. You can also go look on Facebook as well. There's a bunch of um, Facebook groups that are specifically for like people coming to New Zealand and wanting to like buy or sell their van. Where did you stay while you were in New Zealand? Is it hard to find places to camp in New Zealand for a van? Um, actually, it's probably it's it's really not too bad, especially um, like I said, like with the camper van certification. Um, mm-hmm. If you have a van like that, there's these things called freedom camping spots. Um, okay. Some are nicer than others. Sometimes they're just kind of like a few spaces in this sort of parking area, um, okay. but they're like specifically reserved for campers freedom campers um cool. and so sometimes you could be like right next to the beach and um they, there won't be like heaps of spots there'll be just like a few spots but like um if you can get there early enough you can get okay. one of those spots um and it's usually pretty yeah it's pretty easy to find them um i used this might be a question later but i used a um an app called camper mate I believe. okay is that the one i said i think so yeah <laughs> i think so <laughs> Yeah, that um, sounds right. Yeah, I used this app called CamperMate, and um, that has like heaps of like different places that you could camp. And so it'll have like you could filter out by the freedom camping spots, the ones that are free. Oh yeah, those okay. freedom camping spots are free. Um, cool. And there's usually toilets and stuff there as well. Gotcha. Um, there's, but like it'll also show you like campgrounds, like different campgrounds, and like it'll even I think you could even filter by like more pricier like flash campgrounds compared okay. to like cheaper cheaper ones but like those cheaper ones are really nice as well like you're camping so it's fun. okay and you felt pretty safe over there as well like no like you didn't feel like in danger or anything yeah i mean honestly like between like obviously i traveled through the states a bit longer than i traveled through new zealand but um like i've definitely had more like weird sketchy situations in the u.s than i have in new zealand like i don't think i've ever i can't even think of like a time in new zealand when i felt like unsafe or like freaked out by anything so okay uh do you, have you ever received the knock in new zealand on the side of the the van like you know like hey you can't sleep here anything like that no they're they're a bit too polite for that you see <laughs> <laughs> they just leave <laughs> Okay. Uh, um, I had one time when I um, parked, I like kind of came into a camp spot late, not a camp spot, but like a freedom camping area late. Mm-hmm. And there wasn't any spots, that, but there was like a, like a spot right next to like the designated area. And I was quite tired. And so I was just like, oh, well, I'll just like fall asleep here for a bit and then like move on in the morning. Mm-hmm. Um Nobody ever knocked on my door or anything. They just left me like a little, um, like, wh- what is it? Courtesy Not notice. It wasn't a fine. It was like a warning. Yeah, like yeah. a courtesy notice. Like, oh. yeah, you can't really park here. So, like, just don't do it again, basically. So it was like a, a little warning that they left, but they didn't wake me up or anything. <laughs> now, the other thing I, I realized after talking to you last time was that you, the, you drive on the opposite side of the road as the U.S. Is that correct? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so was that hard to get used to? Was that did you feel like kind of like did you feel like like nervous or in danger at the, the beginning because it was so foreign or was that an easy uh adaptation? Um no, it was definitely it felt a bit weird. It felt okay. quite weird actually <laughs> at first. Um yeah. I think it helps when you're like when you're first getting used to it to like if you're in, I know that this probably sounds a little bit counterintuitive, but when you're like, when there's more traffic around, it's mm-hmm. a little bit easier because you just kind of like follow traffic 
True. Um, okay. So your your brain doesn't like freak out as much. <laughs> yeah. You just like follow the cars. Um, um, yeah. Now, while you're traveling on the road out there, we're going to switch gears a little bit. Uh, since we're talking about yeah. manual transmissions, we're going to shift gears. Uh, but what kind of <laughs> hobbies did you do? I oh, know it's good. Uh, what kind of <laughs> hobbies did you do while you were on the road and while you're traveling in your van in New Zealand for that year? Um, yeah, like I said, I'm real into hiking and um, okay. backpacking. So that's basically what I came here to do. So basically the van was kind of just like, get me around to see all these cool things. Um, but the majority of what I was doing was, um, yeah, doing like a lot of day hikes, a lot of backpacking here. They call it tramping. Oh, okay. Little, little rubber tramp rendezvous connection there. You know? Yeah, I like that. All right, so tramping instead of backpacking. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I did like heaps of that here. Um, and then, yeah, a lot of beach time. There's lots of really nice beaches. What advice do you have for someone wanting to follow in your footsteps of wanting to come over to New Zealand and check out the van life situation over there? Like, what advice do you have for them? Um... Yeah, I would say like try to do do a bit of research about like visas. Um, like the Immigration New Zealand website is really good to kind of know what what visa and how long you can get it for. Um, okay. It's a little bit tough right now because of COVID times, but hopefully course, yeah. when that that dies down, because um, right now our borders are closed. Um, okay. But hopefully when that dies down, it'll be a little bit easier. Um, okay. But yeah, just kind of do your research and then maybe even look at the, um, even if you're not in New Zealand yet, like maybe just try to find those like Facebook groups for the different vans. So you can kind of maybe do your research about the type of van that you would want. Um, and yeah, just kind of look into like what to look for kind of, okay. kind of stuff. Well, Vanessa, that's awesome. Uh, so um, now if someone does want to follow with, along with your adventures or like check you out on social media, do you have a Instagram or something that you want to share with us? Uh, yeah, sure. My Instagram is van.gypsy. Okay. And we see it on the screen yep. right there. That's perfect. See some, some of my bikes. <laughs> yeah, that's excellent. So and my truck. Excellent. Cool. Oh, man. All right. So... <laughs> Sorry, I'm just <laughs> looking at some of these Oh, photos. look at that. Yeah. <laughs> if you want no, a I nice giggle of some... Yeah. If you want a nice giggle of some of the weird stuff that I do, then. <laughs> yeah. Hey, that's perfect. Kind of, so. kind of good. <laughs> well, Vanessa, thank you so much for sharing your story, your time with us today, your Instagram posts. Um, thank you so much for taking the time. I really do appreciate it. Um, yeah, it's been such a pleasure talking to you today. Yeah. Yeah. No worries. Thanks for um, having me. And yeah, hopefully this helps other people who might want to, who are considering like coming to New Zealand. Okay. It's worth Excellent. it. It's so pretty here. Highly recommend. I've seen photos and I would love to come over there at some point. So, well, everybody out there watching today, thank you so much for joining us here. Uh, we really appreciate you taking the time and we hope that you enjoyed this video and hope you enjoy listening to Vanessa and I talking about uh, New Zealand and so forth. Have any of you guys out there wanted to travel to New Zealand? Uh, have you ever been to New Zealand? Do you have any other advice that you want to share with the group? We would really appreciate it. Uh, but for now, we just want to say so long and we'll see you down the road. Bye, guys. <laughs> Bye, guys.